It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies. More stream for your listening pleasure this week, as we still cannot watch films as they were meant to be seen in a theater. Oh well, as Freddie Mercury once said, the show must go on. Empty spaces, what are we living for? Abandoned places, I guess we know the score. On and on, does anybody know what we are looking for? But I digress. Yeah, you do. And actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hey, hey. Hey there, Jim. So with the introductions out of the way, let's rage on. Well, we got a jam-packed session. Only our 72nd take, but we've got it down first time, all the time. We're going to do some streaming, motherfucking streaming. We're going to do, which includes VOD, Shutter, and Prime, Open Rage, The List, which is going to be exciting, Rage or Dare, and then it's movie, 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 and then COVID, COVID, COVID. But before... We jump into it. We just want to thank a couple of our listeners who happen to find on our website, which you all can too, you can find us, buy us a movie rental. And we had three people we want to do shout out to. One is Rika, one is Rod, and one is Mitch from the podcast Real Locker Room Talk. So uh, thanks to you guys. And the rest of you, you can also go on our website, filmrageyyc.com. You can click on our front page or on our merch page and buy us a movie rental. Then send us a dare and we'll probably watch it because we're that desperate. Uh, And then guess what? You can also buy merch. We now have merch that you can all buy and love. So, you know, you can always buy your loved ones Film Rage merch because that's probably what they need. Like for the person that you find hard to buy for, It's like the perfect present. All right, Jim. Right? So, yeah. Let's do this. Let's dance. You got it. Streaming, 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 streaming. And we're doing what? We are streaming, Jim. Okay, so we are going to start with a little video on demand action. David Burns, American Utopia. David Burns. Yes. David Burns, American Utopia, as seen on Broadway, is brought to the screen by Spike Lee in this timely concert film that attempts to entertain, but also teach and inspire. The focus, on, the focus is on the artists. There are no lavish sets. There's just mesmerizing choreography, amazing musicians, and David Burns' undeniable ability to engage the audience. Whether that be in the theater or the person sitting at home on their couch. In between songs, we get some commentary from Byrne with what seem like trivial notions at first, such as how we meet. But then with those notions turn into bigger concepts to contemplate, such as individual versus community and how we express ourselves in these times. The film is also an exercise to shake us out of complacency to make a difference. That can be as simple as casting your vote or finding your passion or even doing something to combat the things that outrage you. David Byrne is an absolute treasure. There are many artists from his era that are still touring, trying to squeeze that last dollar out of the nostalgia, but ultimately they are spinning their wheels in the past. David Byrne, however, is celebrating the past while still looking to the future, and in doing so, trying to make us all better together. This film was an absolute pleasure. This film was Mondo. Well, my review is real easy and simple because you did such a blessedly fantastic review, I might add. 
Mm. which I've never said before. So, you know, good on you for once. (laughs) Uh, So my review is yes, yes, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Agree. Right? Of course. Sure. Indeed. Certainly. Love David Byrne. There is a reason why I love David Byrne. And this perfect interaction with music, dance, movement, cinematography, and film is just a very, very small reason why. And I guess Spike Lee is back to making Mondos. He now only has seven more to go, and then he can be on our undoubted list. That's my review. That's your whole review. Excellent. This this movie... uh, you know, when I when I talked about this and I I I found like I was we were doing searching to see what we were gonna see this week and I saw this and I just went what like first off I never even heard of it. it and it played at Toronto International Film Festival and ever since it it would play there I was considering when we could stream their stuff yeah I was considering purchasing at that point for like twenty bucks or whatever it was but I I uh, you held I, off. I held off, and you know, not not that I'm glad I did, but I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. glad we saw it at about the same time, so we could have a fresh discussion about it. Yeah, for there's sure. Just, there's just a casualness to to burn that is really it's easy going, but he says so much, and I just I just like watching the guy. I mean, he's, there's just something about him. I he's yeah. fantastic. He's mesmerizing. He really is. Guess who's really being is. added this week? Well, <laughs> I don't know that you get it. I guess you could. I mean, haven't you seen true stories? Yeah. 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 We'll talk later. All right. (laughs) Okay. Well, we also got to see something else on VOD. Oh yeah. We saw Rams from 2020 and it's directed by Jeremy Sims and written by Jules Duncan. And based on the film, or based on by, I can't even pronounce this, Grimmier. Grimmier. Hackenschon. Hackenschon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. I'm going to be saying his name again in the review, so I'll trip over it one more time for us. a boy. Well, at least, at least I don't always have to sound like I only speak one language. Yeah, that's um, a tough one to say. Yeah. Uh, it stars Sam Neill, Michael, is it Katon or Katon? I've been saying cat on, but I'm not 100% sure. It's like a cat on a hot turn roof, though. I can tell yep. you that. Um, Miranda Richardson and Asher Keddy. Mm-hmm. So Sam Neill is quickly becoming my favorite old dude curmudgeon. Every movie he is in these days, he plays the old timer who's always crabby until the end of the movie. Not a complaint, just an observation. This film has so many layers, and like most Australian films, it's got a lot of heart. The relationship between Sam Neill and his brother, Michael Caton, uh, was done so brilliantly and naturally. Love the fact that there was uh, not a forced love story. It kind of looked like it was going to go that way, but it never happened. Um, Other than the love of the two brothers. Love the slow, methodical build to the stories and the relationships of all the characters. There is some difficult scenes to watch in this movie. Um, The whole concept of the slaughter of all the sheep, uh, but still done in a tactful and respectful way. The subtle humor throughout the film gives some great breakup to the intensity of this film content. And one disaster after another befalls this small farming community. But the message of unity and coming together was masterfully written and depicted. This film is an Aussie sheep-loving wink wink mondo mm. all right favorite line though yes oh uh, right oh right oh that's it <laughs> it was an awesome it was the awesome line it was the end of the movie all right right oh right oh yes <laughs> All right, sir. Rams. Uh, This is one of those cases where had I not seen the original Rams. Oh, no. I probably would have been able to just sit back and enjoy this remake. See, I I had. Yeah, see, I I had. I saw it at the Globe, by the way. Maybe we'll get to go see a movie there again. Someday. Someday. 
Um, I was curious how the original film, which takes place in Iceland, would translate into having it set in Australia. It actually worked fairly well and managed to capture a lot of the charm of the original. Sam Neill is always a welcome sight and is solid as usual, playing the role of Colin. But it is Colin's brother, Les, played by Michael Caton, that steals the show. Every moment and expression by Les was entertaining. Uh, he really made this film for me. Still, the film was not as good as the original Rams from 2015, directed, written, and produced by Grimmer Hack on Orson. Kind of That's, brutalized. That, that was yeah. pretty good, that one. I think that one was I better. Think that one, uh, it was better. Uh, the original was grim. It was a grim, tragic comedy that had tremendous cinematography and inv involved you in the Icelandic tale. The remake was less grim, less tragic, and less comical with less memorable cinematography that did not invite you into the story like the original did. The remake was just less. However, it was still an entertaining romp. And if you are unable to watch the original, it is a reasonable facsimile. But if you can, just watch the 2015 version. Rams 2020 is meh. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Sweet, sweet. It's one of those movies where I kind of wish, well, I don't wish that I didn't see the original because the original was, it was just, it just was just that much better on every level. Yeah. And the original was Mondo. I, I absolutely adored the original. I thought and, this one was Mondo. It, so now I want to see the other one. And this one just suffered from the, com the constant comparisons. And I'm human. I can't not do yeah, that. Yeah, you can't. You it's know? true. You can't separate it. Well, so and, and you know what? I think about remakes. So the fact, yeah. like, had I seen the original, I probably would have been, I would have been in the same boat as you. But because I saw yeah. this one first. Exactly. And I've and got I, to rate it for what it is. The movie was great. Yep. It's really, it's, it really captures the character development. This is fantastic. Picture this story in Iceland, though. Come on. I do love Icelandic films, though. Yeah, so it's, I, it's so good. It's so uh, good. But, but they could both be Mondo. So now I'm going to go see that, and then it's going <sighs> to be also Mondo. It's, yeah, it's, this was very entertaining, but just not even close to the original. See some Rams. See some Rams. All right. From there, we are going to Prime. We streamed something on Prime, Jim. Yeah, we did, unfortunately. We <laughs> unfortunately, wow. Oh, yeah. Really? That's interesting to me. I thought you'd actually like this one a lot. I thought I was going to like it too. Well, wait, maybe I did like some of it. Who knows? Keep going. Maybe I like some of it too. Um, it is called I Care a Lot. All right. <sighs> I Care a Lot. This is a movie about horrible people. Uh, Rosamund Pike stars as Marla Grayson, a professional court-appointed guardian who bilks her elderly clients out of their assets. Minutes into this film, you hate this woman, and with good reason, as she is pure evil. Eventually, she takes on the case of Jennifer Peterson, played by Diane Wiest, who on the surface seems like the ultimate score. This turns out to be a big mistake, as Jennifer has some connections that will make life difficult for Marla. We are introduced to a Russian mobster played by Peter Dinklage. Another welcome sight, by the way. Yep. And he, and he is none too impressed by what has happened to Jennifer. From here, we are introduced to a lawyer played by Chris Messina, and we get the scene of the film as Marla and him go back and forth in a sort of negotiation Agreed. that had some razor-sharp dialogue and a couple of laugh-out-loud moments. I was really, and I mean really, enjoying the first two-thirds of this movie. This was how you this was how you make a film about horrible people doing horrible things. There was no one in this you could root for, as they are all awful people. The guardian, the mobster, the lawyer, even the little old lady this was happening to all had next to no redeeming qualities. Yet I was still intrigued to do to uh, find out how this story would resolve itself. This was on its way to being Mondo. But then Marla gets out of a situation with a Herculean. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't say. I can't speak today. Herculean. Herculean. Herculean effort. There you go. I'm gonna try the sentence one more time. Let's See do it I for good luck. And three, measure. two, one. We can edit that out, right? Never. We don't edit. Of course we don't. 
you get the raw goods. This was on its way to being Mondo, but then Marla gets out of a situation with a Herculean effort that I just could not buy into. Nice. This, this badass in the courtroom becomes almost superhuman in the face of real physical danger. Not believable and unnecessary. It is Marla's intellect and her ability to navigate the system that made her character, making her perform tasks that I do not buy. Her ability to perform was unnecessary and sort of sank the last act. I also am not sure I'm completely enthralled with the very ending. Sometimes it's okay to have the bad guy win. I feel it would have given the message within the film more punch, but they ended it the way they did. And you know, that's that. I really enjoyed the wickedness of the first two thirds of this movie, but unfortunately it gave way to a relatively silly last third, which makes this a meh. Ugh, you're giving away mess today again. This, this, yeah, it, it's a, I thought it, two thirds in, I'm still loving it. I thought it was going to be a Mondo and it, I just, well, I was so annoyed, but it came, anyways. So. Let me, let me tell you yeah, what I thought and then we'll, we can jump on a bandwagon together and go roaring down the hill. Uh, uh, so, um, I had a couple of issues with the beginning and have a feeling not everything uh, is that easy, first off, to get possession and access to someone's entire net worth? And since I work in finance, I know that's not necessarily true, but okay, I let that go. Once I got past that, the film started to make me fall in love with all the evil and deplorable people filling up the entire space of this film. Whoa, almost sounds like the same things we're saying here. Yeah. The conversation with, Ro with Rosamund Pike and Chris Messina oh. was was an epic interaction. This scene really did set the stage for this film. Diane motherfucking waste is so motherfucking brilliant. I love her so much. Um, I love the outfits of literally everyone in this film. The costume designer in this did an amazing job. Um, the outfits for Mr. Smith, quote unquote, and his brothers when they went to the old folks home were epic. Yes. Uh, it was like I was laughing the whole time as they're going in. Then slowly, little things started to slowly creep in that bothered me. Not hugely, but slowly interwoven into the story. Like how ballsy Rosamund Pike's uh, confidence through the discussion she had with my with Peter Dinklage seemed almost a little bit off character. We knew she was a panther, but we don't know. I mean, it, that just seemed a little unrealistic because they'd shown her earlier where she was talking with her girlfriend and they were actually feared for their lives. Yeah. How long? Okay. And then how long can she hold her breath while under the influence of a full half bottle of vodka? And then the killers, who are trained professionals, do not wait around to ensure that she's actually dead. Things started escalating, first an annoyance, then into a slow simmering rage. I just started questioning things way more than I would have had this movie changed a little bit. Why would Dinklage not just break in and kill everybody in the nursing home where his mom was? Made no sense. Um, why, why did they not follow Rosamund's character through the movie? And then all of a sudden, oh wait, they did follow her character. It's like, like it just, things just were not adding up. It's obvious that they were following her because they found her and found her girlfriend. Then seeing Rosamund's uh, con um, continually to live did not make me any happier. It just made me more mad that she kept living any longer. And every second that she was allowed to live just continued to make me more annoyed. Uh, are we su supposed to be feeling anything for her? No, well, that no, we weren't. No, exactly. Um, we already hate and despise her. Anything she does but drop dead is not gonna make us feel anything better for her. This film had so much promise and then the bottom just fell out of everything. <clears throat> just got more unrealistic and idiotic, including the fact that Rosamund Pike's character became a crime boss and has mad secret agent skills. Like, come on. This, I was so enraged by this point. This film started as a future, a future Mondo, climbed to the Mondo tree for some yep. of 
Diane Weist's uh, stuff, then slowly dropped over time to a giant, unrealistic, unbelievable, and convenient rage. Wow. And the ending was so awful and drawn out and stupid. The actual ending was so predictable because guess what? Anything well, that drawn push, out had to out. have that exact ending. The title is a lie. I do not care a lot. In fact, I do not care at all. But wow. it does have quite a few good lines that you can pull out of it. So I'm going to start off slow and introduce you to the favorite one. So just let's just say you won't be comfortable or uncomfortable ever again. That's one. Mm -hmm. But then Diane Weist had the best lines. I'm the biggest mistake you ever made, or even better, have it. <laughs> Sorry, I have to restart this one too. <laughs> or her better line. Yes. Have at it, you little crock of cunt. <laughs> just thought when she said that, I was just like, what? And I have to argue with you. I love Diane Weiss's character. I thought she was brilliant. She she wasn't. I, didn't think, I loved I loved the character. No, I she know. She's still despicable. She's a terrible person. Well, you don't know that. They didn't really show her being despicable, uh, other than other than her one line. <laughs> yeah, I think we know it, but <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure she, any, that doesn't make her any less appealing in this movie. She was fantastic in this movie, and as I say, every character in this was fantastic in this movie until it fell off a cliff. Yeah, you're right, but it fell off hard. Like I don't know why you were so forgiving. The the first two so thirds of the movie because, because I loved the first two thirds of the movie. Like yeah, I, I, I did too. I'm like, this is so good. I am. You've, I'm enjoying. You, I couldn't believe how much I was enjoying it because I didn't know anything about this going in, and I'm watching nope. this. And I'm like, this is good. This might be the best movie of the year, and then stuff. Yeah, up. yeah. Well, you've you've given movies a rage after it being a mondo the entire movie for the last five minutes and this was the last one third of the movie the fact that you're giving this a meh is super 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 generous because this ending destroyed the entire movie destroyed it shows, it. it shows you how much i enjoyed the first two thirds i guess no it's it you are being way too generous i i can't accept that you've given other movies for five minutes of a film a rage and that you're gonna get this one passed with a meh yeah, it's a man. Everybody <laughs> was so good in it. And the So the first... what? The two one third of it was so god awful. It made the whole movie and negated everything that happened before that. I was in love with this movie too. Or, normally then, I would normally I would agree with you, but Well, you're just wrong this week. I'm just have to make sure that that is known so that ah, everybody listening knows okay. this is a rage and you may like the first two thirds, but by the time you get to the last third, you're going to absolutely think this movie is stupid. Well, it's kind of funny. Wow. I'm going to save it. Let's go on to the next movie, Jim. <laughs> I can't wait for what the next, what you're going to say next. Okay. Well, the next one we saw was on Shudder. Dum -dum. Thank you. Uh, we, <laughs> when Mia, a social media star, becomes the target of an online terror campaign, she has to solve a series of games to prevent people she cares about from getting murdered. But is it real or is it just a game at her expense? I'm guessing from your tone, just reading that, that you weren't totally enthralled with this movie. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> okay, so um, Death by CFM Shoes. That was a plus. So the first five minutes was great. I haven't seen that for a while where you get a nice CFM shoe right in the head. Bam. A uh, high tech slasher with an addiction to being creepy. Uh, not sure everything he slash they were doing was actually possible to accomplish using technology as uh, it also seemed like he was in two or three places at once, across the street, in her house, and at her friend's place. So it was not doing a good job making me think it was one person. This got and then became so convoluted and busy watching texts and started to become so overwhelmingly annoying. 
I can see where people who may like a whole movie watching people doing texts might like this movie. Um, but for me, it was just boring, annoying, and tiresome. Only good thing was the self-torture scene, the CFM shoe in the head. You know, because, you know, who doesn't like a little bit of self-torture? Yeah, this was not my favorite. Gets a, I'm assuming this is a COVID-made movie, and it's a rage. Well, then. Is this your favorite <laughs> of the week? Pick of the week. Shook. I don't get it. The twist made no sense. The explanation of every twist was dumb. The dog serial killer connection was ridiculous and not believable on any level. So many ridiculous transparent characters with no development whatsoever. The whole movie was annoying. There seems to be no middle ground for the Shutter streaming platform as we either get Mondo films such as La Llorona or Impetigore, or we get films like this. This was a total rage. This was just garbage. It's a touchdown. <laughs> I was like, I think we just got the two point conversion on that. I watched this whole movie kind of slack jawed. I might have even been drooling a little bit because I just like, I just, it was awful. Like, and, and so, like, some of it was so cheap too. Like, did we really need like this weird projection onto the wall behind her of people that were on? Like, it was like, what was that? It looked stupid. It was all grainy and I don't know. It was just bad. There was a, you know, in the whole, I, 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 I uh, actually forgot what my rage was going to be, but now I remember what it was because I didn't actually make a note for myself, but this will be a good segue as we move into the rage section is that I cannot stand movies that want to see us watching people texting each other. I don't get it. Yeah. And, but they tried to do it in a couple different ways here, and it, they, none of them are effective. And it's just like, I don't well, know. can you? Can I don't you... even really know what texting is in the first place. I think it involves one of those walk around phones. It does. Yeah. See, I, I don't, I don't have one. I don't I want I, one. I don't want one. I see them around. I see people are like got their noses in them all the time. But is that how they work? Do you actually, do you actually use? You use your nose. You have to push it to your face and right. and use your nose to rub against it. And then it works. Okay. Yes. And then you can stick that on your genitals if you want, but most of the time it's just your face. I, I don't understand them. So well, yeah. you know what? This is a perfect time to rage. You figure? Oh yeah. All right. Temperature rising. Vision blurring. Rage taking over. Oh, the sweet, sweet music of rage. Mm. I am so happy. So, um, you know, I'm not anti-technology. I mean, we saw a movie on Shudder, actually, not that long ago, that was basically a Zoom call. It was that, good. That was a Mondo. It was fantastic. Do you remember what that one was called? The Host. Yeah, exactly. So it's not that I don't well, like technology. Maybe just Host. I don't know. It's hosting. It's the host. It's it's a bunch of hosts. It but it's on Shudder. It is yeah. yeah. It was great. It was fantastic. The suspense was really well done. Um, everything about it was fun, yep. but, but I, there's a time and a place for technology and these movies where they have the entire film is based on text messaging where you're at. Like if I want to go, you're giving me a look, what's that look? <laughs> Are you taking a dump or something? Are you farting? Did you pull? <laughs> He's got, yeah, he farted. Okay. So <laughs> that's a thumbs up, but yeah, I'm just, I don't get. I do not get why they want, like if, I don't mind, I, I can watch an entire foreign film having to read the subtext and the subtitles, but I do not want to watch P 
people texting each other for an entire movie. It's annoying. And and then, of course, when the movie isn't great, that makes it even worse. But my my rage this week is stop making technology movies where we have to sit and watch people texting. How about you put some thought into the actual script and dialogue and and don't have them texting. Have them talking, even if they were just talking on the phone instead. Or maybe have one text in the whole movie and then the rest of it is actual movie. Mm. What do you think about that? That's an interesting concept. Right? A movie that has that's about a movie. Yeah. Right? Like showing texting. Yeah. Yeah. Like- it's like, oh, okay, wait. Um, you know, this is made you could gotta guess that this is probably made in COVID. Right? Yes, I, I don't know. There was some interaction there. I don't know. Right? Because there was only really her through pretty much the whole movie, and then her sister, but maybe that is her sister. So they <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's my rage this week. It's pretty simple. And oh, by the way, it's just host, not the host. There you go, host. That's what I said first, and then I second, second guessed. guessed. Host, which I should yeah. never do because I'm usually no, right. You're always right. It's just a thing you do. All right, my rage this week. Inconsistencies in characters and story. Uh, I Care A Lot was rolling along, and in the process, it was developing one of the most evil and despicable characters in cinematic history. Marla Grayson is pure evil and is able to perform her despicable deeds through plotting, planning, and exploiting the systems that are in place. She uses her ruthless intellect to get the things she desires. She is not some kick-ass action star that can survive being dragged, uh, uh, drugged and left for dead at the bottom of a lake. Why did the writers veer off the diabolical path they were on and turn this stomach-turning tale of moral depravity into a silly action movie? They took a mondo and made it into a man in, in a little over 20 minutes. That's my rage. Yeah, it it was it was stomach turning, all right, because it was a rage. No, nah, the stomach turning was good. It, it was the, the the whole the whole build up was stomach turning that these evil people were doing. And then the horrible last horrible last third was stomach turning because it made you rage. And then it turned into a rage action movie, which it didn't. Yeah, like. which which I mean, here's a perfectly good example. Compare this movie to The Hunt. Okay. Or even Becky. Yeah, but but that's not what this was. It wasn't as uh, an. Action. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so why did they try and do that? I it doesn't. It, it doesn't make sense. This is why it's a rage. It's terrible. And, and, and no offense to Rosamund Pike, but what is she like? Seventy pounds soaking wet. I just, I don't, yeah, she's. Oh yeah. But apparently yeah. she can kick out a windshield underwater, which is darn near impossible with the pressure that's been put, being put on that. But on yeah. top of that, she has more. It was actually more. If I go back and look, it was more than half a bottle of vodka. Half a bottle of vodka. Yeah. Is there's like no, she, and she was just like, I'm perfectly wide awake. This is easy. Yeah. I can get out of this. I mean, adrenaline might kick in, but not like there's no way. Well, but okay, but even if okay, even if let's just say even if. There's too many convenience in this that make it that it makes it that much stupider. Like, oh, yeah. first off, her girlfriend would have been killed. They never would have just left her half dead. If they were planning on mm-hmm. killing Rosamund Pike's character, they would have killed her too. And then well, on, on they're, they're, that, they're, they're, they're trying to make everything look like an accident. So Yeah, but okay, so these I guys are people that have been in this but these guys have been invisible for 35 years they stole this woman's identity we're kind of putting spoilers in here but whatever this movie is a spoil in itself the, the you know if 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 you're gonna make a film that makes these people look like the the badass gangsters that they are and that everything they do they're like totally fucking it up it makes it totally takes away from the entire movie and makes it a rage it's yeah. just, <laughs> it's well, uh, a tale of two movies it started out fantastic and turned into just garbage you know what, what this became? Man. It became it became Hakan from Let the Right One In. This all the characters became Hakan. They were all incompetent, and yet they still 
wanted us to believe it. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> oh, well. Rage. So sorry. Oh, you want me to say stuff? Okay. I was just getting off on the music. So... <clears throat> We discussed last week that we need to come up with a new category for our lists. You discussed it. Yeah, um, and we need to do it. It's a, it's a must be. We cannot have a mesmerized list without a unmesmerized list. And I'm saying unmesmerized because we don't have a word for it yet. But if there's people who are mesmerizing and we can't take our eyes off them while they're on screen. We know there is the reverse of that. If we've got a doubted and an undoubted, we have to have the anti-actor slash anti-Christ of acting, and we need to come up with a proper name for it. So I have a few names that I'm going to suggest for you. I have a couple of my favorites, but let's just list them off quickly here. So we have the obvious, which is unmesmerized, which... You know, it, it's a placeholder. Uh, but I also like the annoying or the disinterested or disinteresting. How about exhausting or disenchanting or disenchanted? Repulsive, irritating, or how about just the repulsive list? Or draining, fatiguing, disgusting, or the placeholder itself, unmesmerized. I pose to you, and I've got a list of about hmm, about seven or eight people already. I'm ready to add to the list. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's got to happen. It just has to happen. We have to have the name. I want your vote. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of going. I'm kind of leaning towards the disinteresting, because it's kind of like when you're watching them, you're just kind of like. Uh, I'm a little disinterested in whatever they're doing on the screen right now. Disinteresting <laughs> list. That's hard to say. Disinteresting list? Dis uh, disinteresting list. Over here. Disinteresting list. The exhausting list? When they're on, you feel do you feel exhausted? The exhausting list. The repulsive list. Irritating. The irritating. The, the, the. <sighs> They're my choices, eh? Well, I like those a, are... I had a week to come up with this, and this is what you came up with? Well, these are the entire synonyms of the word mesmerize, so... <laughs> really? <laughs> well, there's a couple other ones, but they were bad, so this is this is what we get. This is what we get. Um... Are you leaning towards anything in particular? The despised? The despised. What about repulsive? I'm, I bring up um, I bring up Denise Richards just to remind you of how <laughs> somebody who's okay, also if this, if, doubted. Okay, if, if this has to be someone that's like literally, I want to look away, then maybe the repulsive list is the the best choice. The best choice because you're you're completely repulsed by them. You have you can't even watch their movie. They're so awful. This is what we're going for, right? Yep. Like the, we want this to be strong. Yeah. So if you want to be strong, disinterested isn't strong. It's just like well, you just you're, you've lost interest, but you're not. Yep. You're not repulsed by them. Disenchanted, same thing. Exhausted, yeah. People are in there. Annoying, annoying's not. I think you got to go with repulsive because it's the it's the one on here that says what you. Other than disgusting, I guess could could go <laughs> as well. But disgusting, I don't know. It doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't kind of repulsive. I think is it. I like. I, I like where you're yeah. going with this. So okay, if if I'm voting here, yeah, let's go. It's the repulsive list. All right. Okay. Well, the first person I would like to throw out there. This is for the brand new repulsive list. Is Jaden Smith. <laughs> uh. 
There's not. What are you talking about? What movie have you ever seen him in where he's like not yeah. the worst actor that's ever been on the screen? Yeah, he was fine in on what, uh, what was it? Unhappily ever after. He was fine in that uh, space. He was five um, at the, the space one. He I, was repulsive. He wasn't repulsive. That, that was what was uh, After Earth or something? Was that? Yeah, what was he was repulsive, and yeah, that movie he, was repulsive. Yeah, he was fine. James Smith, you're safe. You're not on the repulsive list. Oh, you're awful. I can't believe it. What else you got? Just, I got Hayden Christensen. Hayden Christensen. Let's see. Life is a house. I honestly believe that had Hayden Christensen not been in Life is a House, that would have been a pretty good movie. Other so than it's ridiculous ending, which now I would have still been awful because it had that stupid coincidental ending. And if everybody, anybody knows, I've seen it. That's yes like, oh yes this thing that we introduced like at the beginning popped up again kind of like I, I care a lot happened. <laughs> anyways um another one that actually could have been uh yeah yeah okay yeah he's repulsive I, I yes Woo, we got one we got one people we got one yeah, okay i'm gonna give you two more this week at least two more it's fun let's do yeah it. no we're gonna do two because we're gonna save right. some uh two. because i've got a mesmerized couple of mesmerized we've got to add so, right. good, 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 good. um good. i'm gonna give you my most repulsive person in fact somebody that i will refuse to watch their movies because i can't stand her that much and that is julia roberts nope you are wrong Julia Roberts is Julia Roberts. Uh, you know, she's, she's repulsive. Fine. She's fine in Flatliners. She's repulsive in every movie. She was in. Uh, she was in Steel Magnolias. Yeah. <laughs> You're not doing a good sell job there. She was in Steel Magnolias. <laughs> and she was repulsive in that. And in, and in Aaron Brockovich, she was repulsive in that. Hey, Aaron Brockovich, it was that bad. It was all right. Ugh, what is about, wrong uh, with you? What was, the, what was the one where she's uh, trying to get away from her like psycho husband? Who uh, knows? It's the same oh, movie. Sleeping with the Enemy. Oh, uh, I was going to say good. Ocean's Ocean's 11. Was ah, that it? Sleeping with the Enemy. It was she getting terrible. away from her husband there too? Ocean's I was 11. Like, I think I was like 14 or something when I watched it. But I remember watching it as a 14-year-old. Yeah, you bad. probably liked Mystic Pizza too, but that's a whole other story. I... You know what? I don't think I've seen Mystic Pizza. Well, watch Mystic Pizza and tell me you don't think she's repulsive. Well, I do not believe. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I am not a Julia Roberts fan. But just like all the lists, the, the person has to be repulsive to me. And you know what? She can be in a movie and I'm fine with it. Okay. I'll let you pass that one. But just know that I think she's repulsive. Okay, oh, this one, knows. this one, I know is gonna pass your test. You do, do you? And that is Mr. Paul Walker. Pretty boy, Paul Walker is absolutely repulsive. This guy can't act his way out of a wet paper bag. I have never seen a actor in the history of film that only got his job because he's a pretty boy. Pretty boy, Paul Walker is one of the worst actors that has ever been. Yeah, he's dead now. I am going to speak ill of the dead. The guy is awful. He should not have had a career. <laughs> he is absolutely unwatchable. His name is on something. I can't even watch the campy stuff. Tammy and the T-Rex, I have yet to watch because pretty boy Paul Walker's in it, and I can't stand this guy. He's god-awful. <laughs> and it would have been him and Denise Richards. And I'm not yeah. even going to put her forward on this list because she's already on the undoubted. Sorely doubted. Oh, so she's, she'll be on this eventually. That she'll, she'll <laughs> cool, let's not rush into things. Let's not pick the low hanging fruit immediately. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you. I two hate mess. Paul Walker. He's I terrible. know. I He's know. So that's bad. why. I, that's why he made the list, baby. He's like the worst actor ever. How is he? At? Okay, go ahead. Go uh, Hayden Christensen. Remember, he's. And I'm sorry. Uh, Jaden Smith, is, in my opinion, but that's Hay Hayden Christensen. At least nobody's casting him. Paul Walker got work through his whole per career. I guess. I guess Hayden, Even after Christensen, Hayden, just, Hayden Christensen just wasn't pretty enough. I guess. I guess not. Poor Canadian kid. Yes. Okay, so I've got on the mesmerized list 
We talked about her earlier today, and that is Diane Waste. Yeah, a, she's absolutely mesmerizing. Yes, she is. There's no discussion. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull one out that I should have been pulling out a while ago, and maybe I we actually did talk to about him, but because the other week I watched the entire Harry Potter series again, I'm gonna give you Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Mm-hmm. Alan Rickman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's mesmerizing. Yeah. I can't take my eyes off of you. Even when he's in like subpar movies, he's just. Yeah. Uh, or even if he's in a bit part, man, it's like everybody else around him just, he sucks the air right out of everybody. Like I watched Harry Potter and I'm just thinking the amount of amazing actors that are in that series is beyond uh, gary oldman and oh, yeah, her of... and maggie smith and like oh, just yeah. and daniel radcliffe let's face it <laughs> daniel radcliffe i did I, I like him more now than i did then it's true i mean the kids weren't the greatest of actors but they did they did they held their own they were fine. i mean they're up against some of the biggest actors in britain and they they held their own so yeah, they were fine good on them uh okay well that's what i got for you this week We'll hold out mm. now that we've got a new list. People, check it out. Give us, tell us uh, if you're listening, who you would like to add. Tell get, tell us people you want to nominate because we can't always think of. Sometimes we just it just comes because we see a movie and they're in it, and it reminds them of how terrible or how fantastic they are. But sometimes we just don't know everything. So give us some ideas. Tell us. We need we need more people on this list. Yes. Yes. Now, what happens now if we see Tammy and the T Rex, and Denise is on the list? It's gonna be, it's gonna be a epic repulsive off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> to see who's more repulsive, is it the whole fucker, or is it gonna be Denise Richards? <laughs> yeah, don't stop talking about those two, You're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> All right. Last week on Rage or Dare, Jim got to go back to the bag of joy, in my opinion, and what Jim fondly calls the bag of torture when he pulled Sucker Punch from the Dare bag. This week, both of us get to return to Murray's sweet bag of rage. Let's check in with Jim and see if he still thinks the Dare bag is torture. Or did the fine ladies who kick behinds and punch wieners film by the name of Sucker Punch bring him to joygasm? <laughs> oh, dude, that's the best. <laughs> okay. So, Sucker Punch, the whole intro is very music video feel as it is playing an in- entire version of the arrhythmic sweet dreams are made of these uh very quick clean shots music was awesome <clears throat> the shooting at times seemed almost over stylized almost like a string of music videos strung together <clears throat> but all the songs were super cool like some of them obviously not the original artists but the remakes that they had was really cool i, I got the opinion that zack snyder was a um uh, a maker of music videos before he made this movie. It ticks so many boxes, but the biggest box, ladies who kick ass and punch dicks, and the subgenre of the aforementioned, and probably my third favorite of that subgenre is lady prison movies. Be them doc, be them action, be them comedy. Lady prison movies are my third favorite in the subgenre of ladies who kick ass and punch dicks. Yes, that's right. Uh, great music videos, which makes this almost a musical in my mind. Some corny dialogue, almost high school musical-esque. A wee bit of Zack Snyder weirdo mindfuckery. Uh, as much ass kicking and so much dick punching. And lots and lots of CGI. Bryce would be in a severe rage this entire movie. This, I think this movie was made for you to pick, by the way. Mm. It was crazy and dumb. And dumb, by dumb, I mean high school cheerleader practice gone wrong type dumb. So uh, set up like a ladies who kick ass and punch dicks meets the pink ladies and the T-birds from Greece. 
uh, but not just one lady. It had a bunch of super hot ladies, which you'd think would make this film a mondo. Hmm. And there was so much dick punching, so much dick punching. After a while, it felt like a cleanup session after a Bukkake festival, though. Sadly, it was not a mondo. In fact, it was almost not even a meh. But I can forgive a lot if there is enough asses being kicked and dicks being punched. And so this is a meh. And I'm kind of glad that I resaw it. Favorite line, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. That's good advice from any father to his daughters, too. Yeah. It was a meh. I don't even remember it. I saw it in the theaters. I am glad I didn't pluck it again because I know I know I didn't like it. You would have raged. I, I just this whole movie spoke Bryce rage <laughs> from start to finish. Although you can't deny the music videos of this. It's like I almost kind of wish that there wasn't dialogue between the music scenes because then it would have been it could have been potentially could have been a mondo. But yeah, the dialogue was just so awful. You couldn't get behind it. Hmm. Yeah, that's it. It's a meh. It's a meh. It's a meh. It's a meh. So it didn't do its job, people. Come on, you can try harder. Give us better dares than that. Uh, we've got uh, Murray's sweet sweet from Murray. Murray, okay. Yep. Um, I think he has uh, like a Circle K bag. Doesn't he have a Circle K bag? If my memory serves me correctly. Oh, sun! Oh, Sunrise Records, cool. All right, um, let's pluck one. This ought to be terrible, by the way. I'm expecting this to be one of the worst ones yet. <laughs> you're you're in luck because it's it's. We both have to watch this, right? Yeah. Okay, then I've already watched it on our our program. You can see that. Oh. Yeah, we can't we can't have it again because you can't watch it a second time. We're gonna have to pull again. So I pulled Pluto Nash. I have already watched it. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, it was a rage for me. So it's kind of too bad. But <laughs> uh, this is, until Murray makes his return, this is the last time we can pull from his bag because literally, this is the last thing in the bag. Is it also Pluto Nash? Is it Pluto Nash too? It is not. It is a fine movie starring Mister. Paul Walker? Forrest Whitaker. Oh, I love Forrest Whitaker. But when I give you the second actor, you'll know what movie it is. Is it Paul and Walker? Go, Ugh. Is it is it is it Julia Roberts? <laughs> no. It stars Forrest Whitaker and John Travolta. Oh I have a feeling that I don't want to believe it's true. It is. Battlefield oh, Earth. That's what I was worried that it was. No, I don't want to become a Scientologist. Yeah, so we knew that this was coming. I think both of us at some point, <laughs> someone was going to pluck it. I'm kind of glad that we both have to suffer through it together. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, uh, Battlefield Earth. I I already know this is a rage. I've yeah. seen it. Yeah, I, I've one. It's another movie I saw so long. I mean, I literally saw it when it came out. I went to the yep. theater. But I know I wasn't impressed at the time, but I've managed to I've managed to block a lot of movies from my mind, and this is one of them. I <laughs> I just remember that some goofy looking contact lenses. That's all I remember about it. And everybody really bad. Had, everybody effects. had like long hair. I think. Everybody yeah, sweet, long sweet. Hair. Yeah, long sweet, hair sweet and goofy lens. contact lenses. That's all I remember about this movie. That yeah, might be that's... my review. That my review next week. Uh, long hair, <laughs> contact lenses. It was it's a, a mondo. <laughs> a mondo, yeah, maybe. Had the best hair and makeup of any movie ever made. <laughs> it was the best. <laughs> and there was a cameo by Julia Roberts, which was unexpected. Oh, I didn't remember that. Well, there's a few. Maybe Julia Roberts is a Scientologist. Who knows? I didn't know Forrest Whitaker was. I'm sure they wouldn't have asked him to be in it if he wasn't. I'm not sure about that. I don't think they were they were touting this at the time as a Scientology movie for the people that were in it. They were just like, here it is. Well, I, I seem to remember the press at that time because it is an L. Ron Hubbard. It is L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah, I guess. So, I mean, 
Yeah, I guess if you put, you know, two and two, two, and two together. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to do my research on Forrest Whitaker. Forrest, are you part of Scientology or not? Yeah, I hope, I hope he's not. Eh, whatever. People can be what they want to be as long as it's not hurting anybody else. Tom yeah. Cruise seems to be happy. Does he, though? I don't know. I don't know him personally. I don't know. I like his stunts. That makes him cool. Does it? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this this episode's really winding down. Here. It's, it's. I think it. I think it's time to go home, Jim. It's time to go. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Ragers, for listening. Uh, please go and check out our website, filmrageyyc.com, where you can either buy us a movie rental so we can keep watching terrible movies or you can do something even more exciting and buy some of our new merch but we would like to thank our friends from leonard conlon and leonard conlon photography you want to say hi to our boy murray we want you back buddy uh find us at film rage yyc on twitter instagram and facebook uh, we are always wanting your feedback to make this a raging blast for all listeners. Please give us dares. Give us rages. Tell us some actors you hate. Tell us actors you love. Give us give us all kinds of juice. Uh, yeah, then post some stuff on uh, Apple Podcasts, on our website, on Podchaser. Give us feedback. Let us help us make this better for you guys, too. No matter what you do, please make us rage. Please. Please. That's it for this week. Rage on!